NFL draft and rookies. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah Podcast off the rails already. But there is not a chance in hell Justin Fields is finishing <laughs> in the top 10. There you know what, Mikey? Shut <laughs> yeah. He wants Why it. Why not? He, you don't want the smoke. He's Calvin Johnson. He's Calvin oh, Johnson. Oh, good God. Oh, my yes. God. yes. 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 What are we going to do with you? It just, you know, just add, it adds a little extra flavor to the podcast. I, mean. uh, I, I think you're disrespecting David Njoku. <laughs> Thank God yeah. for Joe Flacco. That's all I can say. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll help the owners. Don't draft Kadarius Tony. I got to give the people what they want. I mean, come on. It's same. Uh, I'm going to milk it. I'm going to milk it for all it's worth. I'll give you something to milk. It was rock and roll. It's that time of the week where you lovely people get to listen to the MHA podcast. We recap week two of the 2024 season. I'm Eric Lansing, along with Todd Diamond, who, uh, you know, doing Todd Diamond things. Champ is here! And, of mm-hmm. course, with us, Mikey Renault. Todd, how are we feeling today? You know, 2-0. and oh. Feels good. Feels good. You know, it, uh, you know, everything's rolling. But, again, you got to, you know, you got to make sure you, you, you prepare for everything. And we'll talk about it, obviously, with injuries, you know, popping up here in the first two weeks. So, but... Other than that, my team is all kosher. Oh, yeah. Is, uh, based on the intros, Calvin Johnson now really Calvin Johnson? Or Quentin Johnston hey. is Calvin Johnson? I'm all confused now. Hey, two touchdowns. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> What's up, Miguel? How we doing? I mean, we're doing good. We're, I'm also part of the undefeated 2-0 and club. So, I mean can't be feeling bad right <laughs> that's right 100 percent should be feeling great a uh, lot to get to on this show plenty of injuries which is not great uh we have some mha trivia we'll look back on this second weekend of the fantasy football season and of course we'll talk about our duds and studs let's get in to that news i don't understand what the news is it's Wait. just like hey here's a bunch of <laughs> you can't fix that happened that was horrible <laughs> <laughs> All right, there's a lot of it, so if you guys want to chime in on something, just interrupt me. But we'll start with something that happened, I think, before even the game started. But Broncos running back Audric Estime was placed on the IL. He's dealing with an ankle injury. Uh, Chiefs wide receiver Hollywood Brown will more than likely miss the rest of the 2024 season. He just had uh, shoulder surgery. Um, On Thursday night, of course, for those who watched the game, Tua Tunga Viola took quite the tackle, took, uh, took quite the hit, and was put on the IL dealing with yet another concussion in his short football career. Um, Going to be tough for those owners who have uh, those wide receivers and Waddle and, and Tyree Kill. Uh, we'll talk about Devin A. Chan. Doesn't seem to bother him too much, but definitely not good. Uh, the Dolphins, in a move, coinciding with that to a IL stint. Tyler Huntley was picked up off the Ravens pack practice squad. So I guess it could be Tyler Huntley or Skylar Thompson. Have your waiver wires ready. Uh, Pacers rookie running back, Marshawn Lloyd. He was hurt before the season even started, but he was officially put on the IL this week and will miss at least four weeks. Uh, Justin Jefferson dealing uh, with a quadriceps issue in his day-to-day. Tough break here for the Broncos. Their right tackle, Matt McGlinchey, placed on the IL. He's suffering from a major MCL sprain. Debo Samuel hurt again. It's just like death and taxes. He'll miss a few weeks. With a calf strain, but that's what they said about McCaffrey, and he ended up going on the IL as well. So watch out, Debo Samuel owner. Uh, Evan Ingram was a late scratch on Sunday as the Jaguars tight end is being hampered by a hamstring injury. Cooper Cup will miss at least four weeks after being placed on the IL after sustaining an ankle injury. Uh, We're waiting, and if you guys know, please tell me. But I was looking to see what happened with Joe Mixon. Uh, He was taken down by a hip drop tackle. I uh, haven't seen anything, but there's news that could be coming up any day now. Uh, last year's number one overall pick, Bryce Young, is being benched after two subpar outings to start this 2024 season. And maybe the biggest news is Chiefs running back Isaiah Pacheco slated to miss six to eight weeks after fracture, ugh, after fracturing his fibula. fibula easy for me to say. Uh, thus, the team signing Kareem Hunt today. Shouldn't owners be excited about Kareem Hunt, Miguel? Uh, yes, maybe. No, 
<laughs> I don't know. Who knows? If we're, Chiefs, you're Chiefs is a good team. Running back roulette. He stinks. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Is it is it the Samaj P. Ryan or the other fellow? I can't even think of his name. The guy who actually got a lot of them run last week. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that, that's gonna be a tough decision. Probably is it a wait and see? I mean, if you got a high waiver, then maybe you just kind of have to take that chance. Unless you are just all, unless you're like Mikey or maybe Aaron, who are just have so much running back depth, they may not need to waste a waiver on them. But uh, I don't know. We'll have to see how it all kind of goes down. Uh, anything else that I missed? Anything you guys want to mention about any of that? Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddle, that's got to be tough for for those owners. So Carson Steele is the running back. Thank so. you very much. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Cup and Puka out. Yeah, that's that's, that's <laughs> tough for the Rams. Very, very tough for the Rams. I wonder what that does to Kyron Williams, just because now they can just focus so much on the run. Maybe, or maybe they just run more. I don't know. I don't know. They were, they're dealing with so many injuries on the offensive line that I'm super concerned about Kyron because uh, now they can just kind of focus all their attention on him. Uh, but, I mean, we say that with Devin A. Chan, right? He was tremendous. We'll talk about that, I'm sure, uh, in the stud category the, when the, they brought in Skylar Thompson. He was just dumping it to him, and he was just racking up the, the yards. So maybe that's a positive for Kyron Williams. Who knows? But – yeah, that's that's definitely tough to see. Debo's hurt again. No surprises there. Um, and I, I haven't heard anything about Joe Mixon, but there's, yeah, I mean, there's he, news. He, there's news. He came back in the game. Yeah, but I heard he was pretty sore afterwards. But hopefully, it's nothing major. I think Kevin has him, if I'm not mistaken. But I think so. So there you go. All right. Well, let's get into the week two recap and take a deep breath here because there's a lot to say. Uh, we'll start with the defending champs. We took on the Lion Rip. Of course, there's a little rivalry there. Both teams were one and one coming in. No, excuse me. That's not correct because Todd was 2 0. Uh, Aaron was. Wait a minute. Where am I at here right now? Uh, they're both 1 oh, and 0. Oh. No. Let's try that again. Uh, everyone questioned the Butterfinger's second round pick of Alvin Kamara, but who's questioning him now? This thing's Ooh. running back racked up 40 points. 40. He rushed for three touchdowns, had 115 rush yards, and added a receiving touchdown. Um, I heard that he could have scored another touchdown, but you know, four is probably enough. Uh, and how about that? Jordan Mason. Now that CMC is on the shelf, Mason gets all the run a hundred yards rushing to go along with a rushing touchdown for 17 points and another great defensive start for the Todd squad. They got 19 from the Houston's defense line rip saw his first round pick Justin Jefferson go for 16. Most of that coming on one play a 97 yard touchdown pass. And Brian Robinson jr. Uh, ran for triple digits hitting 133 rush yards, scored 14 points. Jalen Hurts almost hit 50 on Monday night, but wasn't nearly enough as the Butterfingers won 158 to 121 to improve the 2 and 0. Uh, how about those hot tamales? They squashed the Chad Powers fan club 146 to 93. Uh, this J.K. Dobbins thing could be for real. 20 points from the Chargers running back. Malik Neighbors had his best day as a giant, pulling in 10 catches for 127 yards and a TD. And second round pick Derrick Henry found the end zone for the second straight week. Uh, while James Conner was running all over the Rams defense for 19 points and getting 16 from his kicker, there's not much to, uh, to talk about about with the Chad Powers squad. Subpar day from Anthony Richardson, who had 28. Jamar Chase puts up a yet another dud, just four receptions on 35 yards. And how about tight, top tight end drafted um, in terms of Sam Laporta, just two receptions. 13 yards despite 34 completions from Jared Goff. He only got two of those. Uh, Cooper's Cousins edged out the NWA by just six points in week two. Geno Smith popped off for 52 points. While Devin A. Chan, as we mentioned, was a workhorse on Thursday night. He put in 26 points. And Marvin Harrison Jr. was a tad better than he was the previous week. Instead of just finding one reception, he found the end zone twice while pulling, uh, piling up 130 receiving yards. The NWA finally saw a good week from DK Metcalf as he hauled in 10 receptions, 129 yards and a score. Devontae Adams also had a big day with 20 points. Uh, but with Tua going down on Thursday night, Tyreek Hill suffered on the fantasy stage and Baker Mayfield, NWA's co uh, excuse me, starting quarterback, was less than average. He only scored 32. Cooper's Cousins, 1-1, one one, NWA 0-2. The Lemonheads are also 0-2 after follow, uh, falling 169-155 to, to the notorious CUP squad. Uh, they are now 2-0 and 
Kyler Murray went off against the Rams' putrid defense. He passed for three first-half touchdowns on his way to 51 points. CUP's wide receiver core of Nico Collins, CeeDee Lamb, and Zay Flowers combined for 52 points. And his tight end, McBride, recovered a fumble in the end zone, and he finished with 15 points. Lemonheads got yet another bad outing from Mark Andrews, who could only muster up six points, while despite another big scoring output from the highest-scoring team in the league in the Saints, Chris Olave seems to be an afterthought, scoring just eight. Uh, Jared Goff had 34 completions, but zero touchdown passes. Uh, Kilgore Trout scored the third least amount of points in the week, uh, but was lucky enough to face off against the team who scored the second least amount of points in the belt. Sanders, Kilgore's running back duo of Jonathan Taylor and Tony Pollard combined for 27 points. And his last second pickup of Hunter Henry paid off big 13 from the tight end, which is a hard thing to find in tight ends these days. Belt Sanders got yet another, excuse me, Belt Sanders got another less than stellar performance by Patrick Mahomes, 37 points last week, just 34 this week. And with that, Travis Kelsey caught one measly pass and Xavier Worthy offer also suffered catching just two patches passes 113 to 102 was the score in favor of Kilgore Trout and a much more exciting matchup Eaton W's escaped Monday night with a 1.42 win over the Gonzo Cats Brees Hall was doing Brees Hall things for 21 points for Eaton W's Brock Bowers may be the real deal he had nine receptions for 98 yards and Devin Singletary was fine with 14 the Gonzo Cats had to start their week with a paltry 24 from Josh Allen on Thursday night uh, with Kenneth Walker on the shelf. Uh, Zach Charbonnet did score 16 after falling into the end zone and catching five passes. Chris Godwin looking good these days, put back to back good weeks together this time, finding the end zone on seven catches. Uh, but this game came down to Monday night. Gonzo cats got a nice day from Devonte Smith with no AJ Brown in the lineup. Smith had 16. Uh, the football game itself was quite boring until the final minute and 30 seconds after Saquon dropped that pass on third down. Falcons then proceeded to go down the field and score the go-ahead touchdown. And a lot of that went to Drake London, including the touchdown. He would finish with 14 points. It got Gonzo cast to within two points. And still something like 40 seconds left in the game. Devontae Smith still out there for the Cats uh, to try to catch a pass or two to take that lead. But Jalen Hurts throws that interception pretty quick on the drive, ending any of his chances to try to rally back. Eaton W's... uh, now 2-0 and on the season, and Gonzo Cats 0-2. So I'll let Mikey start things off. If you want to talk about your matchup here this week? Well, I mean, it, it, having A.J. Brown go down for Chad Powers fan club, that was a, a huge loss. I knew it put me in a pretty, you know, damn good situation going in. He didn't have, like, a whole lot of options he could have thrown in there uh, to replace him. And so he had went with Lad McConkey, which helped. Um, I mean, Malik Neighbors was awesome this week. Glad to see that kind of coming through. Uh, and my three-headed monster with running backs, which is actually a five-headed monster. It's like kind of pick and choose. And, you know, all five running backs were in double digits. It's a nice thing to have. Um, glad to be two and zero. Oh. Um, yeah, for sure. Uh, a lot of things didn't go well for Chad Powers this week. Richardson was terrible. Chase terrible. <clears throat> McConkey still learning the ropes. Rashad White was pretty bad. Um, yeah, pretty easy victory for you this week, My, uh, Todd. How about your uh, fight here against your buddy Aaron? Uh, you came up in a big win against Lion Rip. Yeah, I mean, when I always play Aaron too in the last few years, it's kind of been instant classics and kind of going back to the uh, championship game um, in 2018 and everything. So obviously our matchups are, you know, have been uh, been close and, uh, and so forth. But um, Alvin Kamara, everybody, Alvin Kamara, MVP, 40 points. Oh, it was it, – Cause it was interesting. I had, a, I got, cause I was, I was walking downstairs and then I get a text on the group chat from Mikey and he says, Kamara. I'm like, Oh yeah, Kamara scored a touchdown. And then after that, another one, another one, another one. And it was just, it was, it was amazing. It was amazing. And my team, you know, you know, kind of my, I guess at first it was, you know, Gibbs and Kamara, but now you can add Jordan Mason in there for a little bit of a three headed monster at running back. And, um, you know, again, fantasy football, I say this every, every time or every year, 
fantasy the fantasy football it makes you hate and love hate makes you hate and love life at the same time it's finicky they can the gods can you know bless you and they can also you know uh you know throw you to the ground like like the hulk so um you know it was uh yeah team everything was clicking everything was clicking and you know even just getting kind of a i guess a little bit mediocre from uh from purdy because obviously he had two interceptions um in the game but um you know that but that really didn't matter and uh team you know prevailed and so far so good that uh you know drafting Kamara in the second round has been been paying off i mean you know i'll, I'll say it'll be kind of be my battle cry for the rest of the season but you know yahoo sports gave me an f who's getting an f now huh yahoo sports suck it so um uh, uh, i'm 2-0 and 2-0 so it was, uh, you know, I, I was a little nervous. I'd say a little nervous, maybe a little bit going into Monday night. Cause you know, obviously when you don't like, if you don't have any players and, you know, Jalen Hurts could have easily, you know, could get easily gone off and, you know, put up 77 points or done something crazy because, you know, the Falcons defense isn't that great. We've seen that in the past. So, um, but other than, but, you know, kind of got to, you only got to 48. So, um, yeah, I'm happy. So I'm on to, I'm on to week three, and you know, hopefully keep on keep it going. Yeah, just to recap, suck at Yahoo Sports. <laughs> so we talked about J.K. Dobbins and his resurgence this season. So let that will lead us into some MHA trivia. Time to play the game. Time to play the game. Uh, Dobbins has 266 rush yards this season. So let's check in to see who are the NFL's rushing leaders after two weeks. Of course, let me get the music going here. Uh, JK Dobbins is number one. So who are the next nine riding high on that list? First of four wins the game. We always let Todd go first here. So go ahead, Todd, try to name me one of the top nine outside of Dobbins in terms of the NFL's rushing leaders. Um, Kamara. Is Kamara on that list? It is. Well done. Kamara actually sixth. He's got 198 yards. So Todd picks up a point over to Miguel. Well, after 151 this week, Josh Jacobs has to be on that list. Good old Josh Jacobs. Yes, he's back second with 235 yards. Well done, Miguel. Back to you, Todd. Well, let's go with another Butterfinger, uh, Jordan Mason. Jordan Mason. Hmm. Does he have enough yards to fit on this list? He sure does. He's actually number two behind J.K. Dobbins. So Todd picks up yet another point. He's up to two. Can Todd, excuse me, can Mikey tie Todd here? Shot in the dark. You said, uh, what's his face? Brian Robinson reached triple digits this week. I'll go with him. Brian Robinson Jr. He is actually number eight with 173 yards. Well done. So we're tied at two and two. You guys are killing it right now. Back to Todd. You guys got the number two, the number three, the number six, and the number eight. Uh, Devon Achan. Devon Achan. Let's see. No, I'm sorry. He did not make this list. So while he is third in overall points, he is far down there in terms of rushing yards. Uh, uh, I don't even see him in terms of rushing yards. If I go back to the points here, I mean, he's got 120 rushing yards, but he's got 14 receptions and two touchdowns. So unfortunately, wrong answer, Todd. Back to you, Miguel. We're tied two to two. All right. So Mr. James Conner had over 120 against me this week. So I'll go with him. James Conner. Does he have enough to fit inside the top nine? He's actually right at nine. James Conner, 172 yards. So if he had triple digits against you, most of them came in that game alone. All right, Todd, a chance for you to tie it up here. Fall behind by two. Top um, NFL rushing leader, top nine. Stevenson. Are we talking about Ramondre Stevenson? Yes. No. Yes. Are you sure? Is that your final answer? Yeah, it's my final answer. <laughs> is Ramondre Stevenson amongst the top nine? Hmm. He is. Well done, 
Todd. He's fifth, 201 yards rushing. So we are tied at three. Mikey, you can win the game with the right answer here. Let's see, you have one and two. See, there's only two answers you guys haven't gotten yet. Okay. I'm going to go with one of my guys. Which one do I choose? I'll go with Saquon. Saquon Bark. You mean the guy that dropped the pass and that big time game you last <laughs> well, night? Dropping passes doesn't count towards your rushing total. <laughs> that is correct. But are you correct that he's in the top nine? I hope so. You are correct. 204 yards, so he's fourth. The only name that you guys didn't get was Joe Mixon, who had 180, who has 184 yards rushing on the season. So there you go. Miguel wins MHA trivia yet again. Yeah, Good yeah. job. Good <laughs> job, good job. All right, all right, all right. So let's get into our studs and duds. Let's start with the studs. They're probably more fun to talk about. The cream of the crop. Nobody does it better. We will let Todd go first. Well, we'll just go with an easy one here, but uh, Alvin Kamara. Who? Never heard of him. Never heard of him. Yeah. Dude scores four touchdowns. It's it's awesome. Yeah. 40, point, uh, 40 points. It's freaking amazing. Just give him the ball. It's, 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 I mean, granted to that Saints offense, you know, is, is, is on a different level in the first two weeks, but, um, bad, but Kamara, I mean, just killed it. It's fantastic. MVP, <laughs> geez, already at 20 points in the first week, 40 in the second. Unreal. And, and less receptions than I honestly think you would have at this point. But there he is. He's, he's toting the football and he's scoring touchdowns. He's got five on the season already. Mikey, you want to give me a stud? Absolutely. I will give you my man, Malik Neighbors. You know, I, I was kind of, you know, taking some heat for him being my number one receiver in the draft. I know you didn't like him, Eric. And, and I understood the reasoning why. Daniel Jones is his quarterback. I mean, it, it makes sense. He's terrible. He's not going to be able to get him the ball. The way I looked at it was, is, I mean, he has got to throw it to somebody. And if he got enough attempts, he'd be able to get it to neighbors. I mean, he had 10 catches. He had 18 targets out of Daniel Jones's 26 attempts, which is just ridiculous target share. Put up a huge 22.35 points and a touchdown his first of his career. Malik Neighbors, stud. <laughs> yeah, he was pretty good. Um, that defense is terrible. That's all I'm going to say. Washington's defense is pathetic. There's a few pathetic defenses out there. Nah, those defensive coordinators should be ashamed of themselves. But yeah, he. I didn't see any. Of the, I didn't get to see any of the game, but saw some highlights. And Daniel Jones was able to connect a pass from from his arm to someone else. So way to go, Daniel Jones. Um. Stud on my end, Nico Collins. He's the number one guy now, right, isn't he? In Houston, eight receptions, 135 yards and a TD. Been pretty consistent. He's second oh. amongst uh, all wide receivers in the NFL. 18 targets, 14 catches, 300-some yards and a touchdown. I'm confused because last week on the podcast, I clearly remember somebody <laughs> saying Stefan Diggs was the number one target. Now – that We're wasn't me. Nico Collins is the number one target. What is going on here? Well, two touchdowns on three catches doesn't make you the number one wide receiver. Still the number one. In my opinion. Because, I mean, did, how, did, how did Stephon Diggs do this week? Oh, well, did, he, did he even play? <laughs> he, got, he, got, okay, he had five points, all right? He had <laughs> four receptions for 37 yards, okay? All right. <laughs> and so the reason why i wanted to stay away because i have a feeling next week we're gonna say tank dell number one wide receiver i doubt that very much so um give me another stud todd um i'm gonna go with uh marvin harrison jr that the guy the rookie that i was very very high on um at the beginning um uh, during the summer of the rookie podcast and obviously kind of had a dud uh you know, in week one and, um, he, I guess he heard, I guess he heard all the critics and, you know, and, uh, came up big and, you know, get it to your best, get it to your best player. And, and, uh, Kyler Murray did that. And I think it was the second touchdown, uh, that Kyler Murray threw. I mean, I'll say this, I mean, that throw that he threw on the second one, whew, 
was, I mean, it was ridiculous. So, uh, but Marvin Harrison Jr. is looking, you know, look, looking like he got a little bit of that uh, rookie rust off already. So, uh, Marvin Harrison, the next three weeks, Detroit, which is giving up the third most wide receiver points, Washington, number one, San Francisco, number four. I mean, that's all based on how many points you give them to wide receivers. But And if that's the case, it's a pretty good next couple of weeks. But uh, Marvin Harrison, yeah, he showed up. Uh, Mikey, anybody else you want to talk about? Yep, I got to go to Joe's team. Um, he could be 0-2, but part of the reason he's not is because of a pretty savvy pickup he made early in the morning on Sunday when Evan Ingram went down with a pregame injury. He had to go and locate a tight end, and he managed – uh, to pick up Hunter Henry, who amazingly had, you know, over 13 points, you know, eight catches, 109 yards. And for, he barely, you know, he beat Allen by 11 points. I mean, that performance by Hunter Henry was gigantic for him. I feel like, and it's probably just because I had him at the beginning of the year last year, but Hunter Henry, I think was like the number one tight end after two weeks. And then did nothing for the rest of the season. I think maybe at the end of the year, he, he might have had double figures at some point. But yeah, no, I mean, to have to scour the waiver wire in a position that is just terrible, minus a couple, uh, for, for that to work out for him, pretty amazing. The f- fantasy football gods were looking upon him for that, for sure. Uh, I'll talk about Cooper's cousins and his boy, Devin Achan. Oh, uh, goodness. Just just watch. That was the one game I get to watch, so I could kind of talk about it a little bit. But when Tua was in there, when Skylar Thompson was in there, they gave him the ball. No Raheem Mostert. And he was picking up chunk plays on the ground. He caught everything that was thrown his direction. And, you know, with the injury history we've seen with Mostert, Achan could just continue to pile up huge numbers. 26 points uh, is crazy. And he almost had 20 last week, too. He's seen 14 targets. Caught all 14, um, and he got 29 total touches. And that was in a losing effort (laughs) because they needed to come back. And so they were just dumping off passes to him. He was running the ball and being effective. Um, I wasn't super high on A-Chan, at least where he was going in drafts. But, uh, you know, I've been wrong about a lot of things this year, and you could tell by my 0-2 record. But he looks good, honestly. And that was a good good pickup or good draft pick there. By HN. Anything else we want to talk about, or should we go to the duds? Let's go to the duds. Man, I need to play these uh, sound bites. This is the worst. You are the worst. I hate looking at your face. I want to smash it. All right, Mikey, give me one. All right, we got to talk about Sam Laporta, guys. Uh, you know, Jared Goff is leading the NFL in pass attempts right now with 83. And Sam Laporta has eight targets on the season in the two games, eight. Yeah. Uh, I think he had three on Sunday, two catches for 13 yards. This is supposed to be the guy that's the number one tight end. And he ain't playing like it. I don't know what's going on. Maybe it's Jamison Williams getting more involved and maybe he's not looking at him. I don't know, but he has been bad, bad, bad these first two weeks. Yep. Laporta. I mean, all the tight ends really have not lived up to the billing, if you will. I mean, who is the best tight end in the league right now? Whoever scores a touchdown. <laughs> yeah, that's not that's not happening quite a lot. Yeah, I mean, I mean if, if just looking at the first two week scores, you might want to give a guess who the number one tight is tight end is. I don't know. I mean, Brock Bowers was good this week, but he wasn't great in week one, so I doubt it's him. But he's. I mean, yeah, I I have no idea. Uh, Todd, you want to give a quick guess? Isaiah Likely. It sure is. Well done. (laughs) I'm not on my, here we go. Uh, Because he had 20.55 in week one, 30.30 in week two. So he has a little, he has less, he has, uh, what does he have here? About a point more than George Kittle, who had six one weekend and 16 the next. So uh, tight ends are not fun right now at all. But yeah, for Sam Laporta, uh, it's just so surprising. I mean, there's a lot of surprising things with Detroit right now, but uh, that is definitely one of them. Todd, you want to give me a dud? 
Well, it's, well, since we're since we're on the tight end uh, train here, Keep let's, it going. Let's, ta- let, let, let's talk about Kyle Pitts, everybody. Um, you know, hey, Kirk Cousins coming in the fold. Okay, finally, maybe has a quarterback that can maybe fix Kyle Pitts. Okay, had a good week. Had maybe had one, had good week in week one. You know, well, he scored a touchdown in week one. I mean, I guess it counts as good, but yeah, I wouldn't call but, it. But um, but four points, four points. I. I you know, I, I just don't know like, when when will when when will the day come? Well, when that's like you know what, Kyle Pitts, it's it's just not working anymore. It's just not working. You need to just go off into the off into the sunset somewhere and just it's it's just not working anymore. It's just not working. He's just it's. I, I think if you even put the greatest quarterback, I don't know if you even put the greatest quarterback throwing him the football. Um, if he'd still do well. So yeah, I, you know, you know what, and, he, and as much as I play tight end roulette every single week and everything, and it's kind of been the thing now, I don't think I, I don't think I would draft. I don't, I mean, draft. I don't think I would pick up Kyle Pitts. Oh my God. So doom and gloom. I'm calling my shot this week. Oh, you God. watch what happens with Kyle Pitts this week, Todd. He's going to be one of the top scoring tight ends this week. And you are going to eat those words. Oh wow! All right, okay. I'll 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 be ready. I'll be ready. I mean, I mean, it might be bland, so I'm gonna have to put some ketchup on it. But okay, all right, whatever works for you. <laughs> uh, th- just for record, uh, Pitts is taking on uh, Kansas City's defense. They gave up 20 points to Isaiah Likely, and it's like 11.5 against Mike Gesicki. Damn straight. Go along with 5.6 versus Eric All Jr part of that Cincinnati squad. So in essence, like 18 points. So maybe, maybe uh, we'll see if Mikey's a tight end whisperer. Um, one I want to throw out there is Michael Pittman Jr. Another terrible outing, four receptions, 31 yards last week, even worse this week, three receptions, 21 yards. Anthony Richardson uh, has not had a great start to the season in terms of throwing accurately. Um, and Pitt, Pitt, Pittman has Baltimore next weekend as well. Uh, this is a big time wide receiver for Aaron to try to step up. Um, didn't bother, didn't hurt him too much in the week one, but definitely hurt him here in week two. Uh, Todd, you want you have another dud out there? Do you want to talk about? Let's go with the uh, Xavier Worthy. I mean, obviously, what he did in week one, kind of you know introducing himself to the NFL world, and, and oh, they found maybe another you know version of Tyree Kill. Um, three points. Three points uh, against Cincinnati. Um, I mean, obviously, the, I mean that's, this this could change now because with Pacheco being out, so um, they might use him a little bit more. But not uh, not what you want to follow up what you did in Week One uh, with eighteen points and a uh, and a, a touch and a and a rushing touchdown and a receiving touchdown. So not good, not good. Mikey, what about you? Another dud. Yeah, I'm actually going to go with Tyreek Hill. I got to call him out because this was NWA's, you know, number one draft choice. He lost by six points to Cooper's Cousins this week. And so five points is not going to cut it from your, you know, first round draft pick. He only had three catches. I know that, you know, Buffalo blew Miami off the field. Tua got hurt. But I mean, when you're Tyree Kill, you got to, and you're number one on the the players 100. Man, you got to perform every week, so no excuses. But there is an excuse, right? I mean, it's Skylar Thompson. Yeah, and, but and do you expect so? Let's so let's say Thompson is your quarterback for next week. He gets all the first first uh, starting lineup reps. You think Tyree Kill is going to come out and put up 19 next week? So so here's here's why I'm not letting him off the hook. Because Skylar Thompson played the fourth quarter in a little piece of the third. Like, yeah. where was Tyreek for the, for the majority of 75% of the game? So Fair I, enough. Yeah, Fair I'm not enough. letting him off the hook. <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> feel you. Um, I'm going to finish off with another first-round wide receiver in Jamar Chase. Oh, man. that that's, There's something wrong with that Bengals offense. I didn't get to watch the game. But just looking at the stats, it didn't look like anybody did really well. I mean, I heard Burrow was okay, but for Jamar Chase to not reach double figures once again. And so that has just got to be so frustrating. And that's the reason why he fell in the first round. That's why I didn't take him at that point. 
Um, even though for a while I was kind of like, well, you know, if, if Burrow's going to be good, then Jamar Chase has got to benefit from it and all that contract stuff and not playing and not getting those preseason reps and uh, just not being uh, ready for the moment. And he has not looked good. No one has really looked. I mean, yeah, I don't know who's looked good on the Bengals, but Jamar Chase this week, five targets, four receptions, 35 yards. Uh, yeesh, not what you want to see out of your first round pick. Uh, anything else? I think that's all I've got here on my rundown, ladies and gentlemen. Is there other things you want to talk about? I can talk about um, next week's opponents, 2-0 and Hot Tamales, taking on Lion Rip, 1-1, one and one, so big rivalry there. Um, a couple of one and one teams go at it in the Chad Powers fan club and Kilgore Trout. Two and zero Notorious CUP has their sights set on three and zero, and will look to do so against the zero and two NWA Cooper's Cousins at one and one. will try to put an L on Eaton W's, who are sitting pretty at two and zero. The defending champs Butterfingers two and zero will look to put the hurt put the hurt on the Belt Sanders. He, they're in a tough spot at zero and two, and in a toilet bowl matchup, a couple of zero and two scrubs in the Lemonheads and the Gonzo Cats will try to see. Uh, try not to see their season flush down the tubes after the first three weeks of the season. No, wait a minute. Like with, again, with the doom and gloom stuff, like <laughs> don't you guys remember that Todd was one in five last year? Hey, we're, none of us are geniuses. <laughs> we're, we're just trying to stay above in the toilet water. That's all we're trying to do. Believe I mean, I'm just trying to get to this one week and then see what happens. Hey, maybe you should take some advice from Todd. I should. I am. I need to just take him out to lunch or actually go golfing with him and just ask him questions <laughs> on what fun. to do. Set my lineup for me. I think that's hey, called collusion. Did... Well, I guess that wouldn't be collusion necessarily. Well, but or or you could look to the cube. Look to the cube. I passed those Rubik's cubes out for a reason. Just just look at the cube and just <laughs> the cube will you know, tell me. Just yeah. Just you know. Just if you're right before you go to sleep, if you're just laying there, just looking at the cube and. Figuring out, hmm, okay, so I got this side. Okay, so golf has one side is good. I'm just, and then you have brown, and then you know, and if you have to go make some moves, make some, you know, uh, make some trades. I mean, have some powwow with your with your players. You know, talk to Olave. You know, something like that. I mean, you have Jamison Williams on your bench. I know, I know. You, I mean, obviously, you'd want to, you know, pair him with uh, with with Amron St. Brown, but then means you'd have to take out a lave and obviously that Saints offense is do is, I mean, it's only two weeks, but you know, looking like, you know, looking like they're just a juggernaut of, you know, destruction of offense. And, and that's, that's including uh Camara leading the way with that part. But um, yeah, you got to look at it that way and uh, you know, figure it out. Just, you know, to, to quote, to quote the movie uh, Matt Damon and the Martian, you know, you have, you, you, there's a lot of problems. You, you 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 solve one problem, you go on to the next one and the next one. And there you go. <laughs> Sometimes I think Todd's doing drugs and maybe that's what's helping him. I, I, I thought I, I thought my innovative it. pedagogy class was difficult. This is just beyond bonkers. I have no idea what Todd's talking about. But, but, but he's remember, the but, champ. He but is remember, the champ. champ is here. But remember in the movie when he talks about when he talks about, you know, you know, there's something, something's going wrong. You, you Wait, uh, see, you, I already forgot. What movie are you talking about? The, the Martian. Martian. The Martian. Okay. So the Martian is what helps you win fantasy football championships. Well, I was just using that analogy of, you know, there's one problem, solve one problem, go on to the next one and then the next one. And then you're, then, you, then, then you stay alive. That's all you got to do. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Oh, all right, that might that might actually that might okay. So Eric, do you feel better now? No, not at all. <laughs> Just all make right. sure you go to all your lo- go to your local blockbuster or Hollywood <laughs> Video and see if you can find The Martian. I've seen The Martian a couple of times. It's a good movie. I feel like it's always on like TBS or something. And yeah. and if it's on, I'm not doing anything. I'll watch it because it's interesting. I have no idea how how it deals with fantasy football and what Todd's talking about. But maybe I just need to watch it a little bit closer next time. Just remember that believing you will do well is half the battle. Well, I guess I just need to poop, use it to make potatoes, and then yes. then go from there. And then exactly. eat and my then, poop potatoes and then try to win a fantasy championship. Eat your gotcha. Poop, eat your poop potatoes while you're watching The Martian. Then you'll figure out how to <laughs> solve the Rubik's Cube that is 
fantasy football. Either that or you'll be smashed by the Hulk. That's what I learned in this podcast. <laughs> yes. Woo. And you and you too can win fantasy championships too. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, there there you have it. Anything else you guys want to talk about before we get out of here? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Maybe the Broncos need to use that analogy. Yeah, go talk to Sean Payton. I'm sure he'll welcome you in. Yeah. <laughs> let me tell you about let me tell you about the Martian uh, coach. <laughs> well, Todd, I'm just hoping that you win, I win because we meet in week four, and that would be great to be three and zero versus three and zero. So, All right. don't f- it up. Okay, will not. I will not f- it up. I promise. There you go. Don't f it up. All right, folks. <laughs> well, from Mikey Renault, Todd Diamond, I'm Eric Lansing. We'll see you next time on the MHA podcast.